Okay? It's a simple thing. Without going, having to go through the, uh, all the steps again. You can check to see if the torque dotted into the R is zero and if the torque dotted into the F is zero. Why do I say that? Why should it be zero? We actually talked about it the last thing on uh, Monday. What did I say? The cross product always gives you a vector that is what? Starts with P. Perpendicular to both the original vectors. Right? So it's perpendicular to the plane made by the first two vectors. So what do we know about vectors that are perpendicular? Their dot products are, starts with Z, zero. Okay, check at this point if uh, the dot product is zero. So that'll be one times, and then the R is uh, negative two, so negative two plus 16 times uh, the component of the R is five, minus 26 times, and the uh, component of the R is three. If you did it correctly, it should always be zero, okay? So negative 2 plus 80 minus uh, 18, 178. And I don't know why it always somehow works when I do it. <laughs> okay. Uh, zero. Isn't that awesome? That actually proves all the stuff about cross product, dot products. It proves that. The dot product of perpendicular vectors gives you zero, and it proves that the cross product gives you a perpendicular vector, okay? And then to be even more certain, you can try the torque dotted into F, uh, so you'll have one times, uh, what was the F? Six plus 16 times negative uh, two, negative 26 times negative one. So 6 minus 32 plus 26. Is that 0? Good, huh? That's when you really get a big, nice, happy face. Okay. So that means the torque was right. Oh, actually something is wrong. I just remembered. Uh, this force is applied three-fifths of the way from the end, not at the end. So I need to put a three-fifths here. Three-fifths here. So I don't need to redo everything. Okay? And then I'll just add a three-fifths here, and I'll just put a parentheses. Let's see? Because I'm applying the force three-fifths of the way from the end. If I apply it halfway at, from the end, I put a half. If I apply the force at the origin, what's the torque? I put a zero here, right? And then zero times the whole thing is zero. So if, if you apply the force at the origin, you have no torque. Okay, so now we do... Part D, if you apply the same torque throughout the whole time, the problem is asking what is the angular momentum in six seconds, right? So you do torque is equal to change in angular momentum divided by change in time. So uh, we can now we can apply that formula. We have three fifths times I plus. 16j minus 26k equals L final minus L initial over 6 seconds. Okay, this one is, we don't have to take a true derivative because we're just saying that the torque is constant. And if the torque is constant, then the derivative becomes uh, L final minus L initial over the time. 
and the L initial is 0. We're assuming initially the ruler wasn't moving. So then we just multiply this by 6. We just have uh, 18 over 5. L final. So the uh, final angular momentum of the object is 18 over 5 i hat plus 16 j hat minus 26. So notice from there that angular momentum is a vector. And in three dimensions, it's going to have three components. We could, if we wanted to, calculate the magnitude of the angular momentum, okay, which would be equal to uh, 18 fifths times the magnitude of that vector. So in unit vector form, you could leave the answer like that. And then in uh, magnitude form, it will be 1 plus 256 plus 26 squared. Hundred and nine point nine six, right? So the magnitude is uh, one hundred nine point nine six, and the units of angular momentum are going to be uh, well. We haven't actually talked about the units of angular momentum. What are they? Uh, angular momentum is uh, r crossed into p by definition. So it's the units of r, which is meter. The units of uh, momentum is kilogram meter per second. Mass time is a velocity. So that's pretty much it. Kilogram meter squared per second. I wish they had an abbreviation for that, but I don't think there is one. So the units of angular momentum is just kilogram meter squared per second. In the British system, it would be slugs feet squared pl uh, per second. So we could leave the answer either in terms of the vector or in terms of this. And then we could add the units to the vector also. And then the last part, part E, asked us what is the final angular velocity of the object. Then we can use the fact that angular momentum is equal to I omega. Okay, so if we know the angular momentum, we just divide the angular momentum by i. That gives us the angular velocity. So it depends how we want to leave the answer. If we want to do it in the vector form, we could uh, do it in, as a vector or as a magnitude. So we could say 18 over 5 and then the i the moment of inertia of the uh, ruler, well, we could use whatever was the answer was, what was the answer from the part A? We could use the, uh, the I from part A. Yeah, 63.3 times omega final. So, uh, And uh, we could divide that. And again, we could just leave that as a vector. Or we could take, get the magnitude of omega, which will be the magnitude of the L divided by 63.3, right? One point seven four rads per second. You see. So after six seconds, the ruler is spinning at uh, one point seven three uh, seven one point seven four radians per second. Now there's another way to do part E and double check to see if your answer is right. <coughs> 